today I want to present to you my understanding of why two negative numbers multiplied gives positive. So why does minus 2 times minus 3 equal 6? In order to explain this, I said I explained my development of my understanding of the algebra. In grade school, we're introduced to numbers and we're, we are taught to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Well, I was taught in grade school that two take away three can't be done. You cannot take away three from two. So that was accepted. When I started studying algebra, I was introduced to negative numbers, or the negative integers, or negative numbers in general. And once I had been shown that there are negative numbers, then we had an answer for two take away three. Two subtract three is negative one. So we had an answer for something that I was told early on couldn't be done. In studying pre-algebra or in Algebra 1, we have uh, the geometry of numbers. If we look at the picture I have here before you on the table, if we start here at zero, and proceed to the right, we get natural numbers. Now, why these numbers go to the right, I think, is arbitrary, but uh, they could have gone some other way, but we show or depict them moving to the right. And the negative integers or negative numbers extend to the left. So we really have a geometry, a geometrical presentation or representation of numbers. We have a line with numbers on it, and we call these numbers real numbers. And we call it a real number line. Well, in studying algebra in the, in the uh, early on, uh, we were given square root negative 4. Well, you can't take the square root of a negative number. And we let it go at that. Then began taking Algebra 2. As we studied Algebra 2, we dealt with polynomials that had degree greater than 1. In other words, solving an equation such as x squared plus 1 equals 0. Now if you solve for x in this equation, you get x equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Well, it was time to introduce a new number. That new number is square root negative 1. That number is simply called I and uh, this letter I, my understanding is that Leonard Euler, a Swiss mathematician of the 18th century, early 19th century, he probably was living in the 18th century, 1700s, uh, he called this square root negative 1 and gave it the symbol I. It was Rene Descartes who was a French mathematician in the early uh, 17th century who called this number imaginary and I think it stuck over the centuries. Uh, it did give mathematicians a great deal of problems but negative numbers did as well. Negative numbers really um, caused trouble to mathematicians until they finally understood or felt more comfortable. By, by the 1830s, uh, with, with Carl Gauss's paper regarding square root negative 1, uh, these numbers, imaginary numbers, if you want to call them that, Gauss called them complex numbers. Uh, they began to uh, take their place in our understanding of numbers. So, when I think of numbers now,
I think of numbers as being geometrically lying on a plane, not just a line, but a plane, two-dimensional. It is the real numbers that lie on a plane. Now, after a, <laughs> several, probably even a couple of centuries or more, mathematicians have found that this imaginary component, square root negative one, actually lies on a, in the plane perpendicular to the real number line. So we, nowadays, we draw a, a complex number plane, uh, a Gaussian plane or an Argand plane, whatever you want to call it. It's a two-dimensional number plane where the real numbers lie on a horizontal line and the imaginary numbers lie on a perpendicular vertical line. And I have here a, a depiction of that. I have the uh, natural numbers or the positive real numbers to the right, the negative real numbers to the left, and the positive imaginary numbers above, and the negative imaginary numbers below. Now complex numbers such as 1 plus 2i and so forth, all the other numbers are going to lie somewhere in this plane. So when we think of, when I think of numbers, I think of numbers as being two-dimensional. I only think of real numbers as being, uh, sorry, uh, uh, being a one dimension, that is having length, that the two dimensional numbers lie on a plane. Now we know also, after <laughs> many people have worked over uh, many decades, that there is a peculiar property of square root negative one. And that is that the square root of negative 1 also uh, changes a number from the real number line by rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So what I'm saying is that just as in grade school, when I was taught that you can't take 3 away from 2, that 2 minus 3 cannot be done, and I was taught that you can't take the square root of negative 4, and I was taught that you cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Is it? I think you can, it's just your number concept has to include complex numbers. I have to introduce that into explaining this because when we deal with mathematics and the operations on numbers, uh, the math doesn't know or doesn't confine itself to a real number line. The math uh, the operations are two-dimensional, so we have to take into account complex numbers. So when we're dealing with these complex numbers and we multiply them, multiplication, the operation of multiplication, is not just a one-dimensional operation. Multiplication requires two dimensions. And we don't realize that when we are multiplying numbers like 2 times 3, we get 6, and then one half times six is three, we get multiplication, and we usually think of it as an extension in space to the right or a compression. And if we multiply positive and negatives, we start running into trouble because we get negative times negative as a positive, and we say, well, we don't understand that. Well, we need to look at multiplication, remember, as two-dimensional. We also need to understand that multiplication of i, or multiplication by square root negative 1, rotates the number that's being multiplied counterclockwise in the plane. We know that square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. In general, the square root of x times the square root of x is just x. So the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 must be negative 1. And if square root of negative 1 is i, then I can say that i times i is negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. And using the same reasoning, we can discern that i to the third power is negative i, and i to the fourth power is positive 1. Now, I, I know that the square root of negative 4 is minus 2i or plus 2i. 
so I have an answer for something that was told couldn't be done. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at some multiplication. If I pick the number 2 and multiply it times 3, then I just move over on the number line and I wind up at 6. If I multiply negative 2 times 3, then I can say that that's the same as if I find a paper here, I have a piece of paper. All right. So, if I'm going to multiply two times, uh, three times negative two, I forgot what I just said. 3 times negative 2, I start here with 3, I can multiply times 2 and get 6, and the negative, remember the negative is i times i. Negative is thought to be negative 1, so that's i times i. So I wind up with 2 times 3 is 6 times i times i again puts me at negative 6. So two times, three times negative two, or two times negative three, whichever, is negative six. Now if I have something like negative two times negative three, which is what I started with here, negative two times negative three. If we start at negative two, and I multiply times three, I get six, but the negative on the three means I have to rotate I, times i. So negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Because when you're performing the operation of multiplication, there is a two-dimensional aspect. One is either a compression or an extension, and the other one is a rotation. And we were taught in early on in mathematics uh, with only a piece of the puzzle. We were taught that Numbers, when you multiply, like multiplication, uh, does not rotate, and it's only when we have to deal with I that we cannot avoid it. And when you're multiplying times a negative number, you are really multiplying by I two times. And in order to understand fully why you get answers the way you do, you have to take in that rotation. So when you have two negatives and you multiply them, you wind up with a positive because of the uh, rotational operation of the imaginaries or the complex. Anytime that you multiply two complex numbers, if you, if you study a pre-calculus and such, anytime you have two complex numbers, you multiply them and add their angles. And anytime that you add two complex numbers, there is a, there is a change of angle that needs to be dealt with there as well. When you, when you divide negative numbers, negative divided by negative is also positive. When you divide by negative numbers, the division, you wind up with a rotation in the opposite direction. But you still get a, an operation of negative with basically 180 degrees. So in summary, we can say that negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6 because when we... Uh, multiply the two numbers, we're dealing with the, uh, a negative i, I'm sorry, a negative 1, which is i times i, and that gives us a rotational property. So that's my understanding of why you multiply two negatives and you get a positive number. <clears throat>